that's from Melanie in Essex. In Essex. Um, I think it's a question. Okay, I'll try to say that. Um, several months ago, on a very snowy day, I went up to um, West Wing University because the Department of Public Health and Safety um, had us there to either testify on several different things. And one of the um, things I testified on was um, apparently the Department wants to get every child, newborn, to school age, inoculated with everything. And I didn't know if you have any say in those matters, or does it come up before you? Because I've studied hundreds of hours into these things, and I would not want a newborn baby or a child of mine to have mercury alone in right blood cells. I can go on and name a bunch of things that if the parents knew it was going into one day old babies, five years old, they would not know. And they're talking about wanting to make this mandatory. Do, are you aware of it? Is there anything you can do about that? Well, not specifically, but I know there are a lot of mandates that come out of the public health committee and in the Department of Public Health. But, uh, but I'd be glad to answer that to find out specifically and uh, I can answer the question or ask the question to the public health department of public health, see what, what mandates they were pushing. But they do, you know, each each agency, each state agency comes up with uh, their own agenda each, each session. Uh, and that's what generally, like in the Public Safety Committee, we get the agenda from the Department of Public Safety, and, and, and along with the fire marshals and, and some others. So that's what we would work through. But I'm sure that what you're talking about happened probably in front of the Department of Public Health. But I will, I will be glad to check for you. Well, if anyone wants to just go to a search engine and put the word vaccination in there with a comma ingredients in, look at every company, what they make, and what's in there. You know, the whole vaccination issue to me is very interesting because I had a, uh, my father uh, had polio as a child, and so um, he was born in 1923, and they, there was no uh, polio vaccine, so um, for the rest of his life, uh, you know, he had, a, he was fortunate he survived, um, so he had a leg brace um, um, on his leg, and, uh, and I think about the people that never had the benefit of having access to vaccine, so I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I try to be open-minded to both sides of the issue because I've seen the benefit that vaccines can do because I witnessed it with my father and, and I, um, you know, so. The statistics will prove otherwise. Those who had the vaccine when I was in school wound up with tainted vaccines. They wound up with brain cancer. More people became ill with polio than would have not. So, I mean, I'm, I'm talking hours and hours of your search. We may agree to disagree on that. Okay. <laughs> um, and I have one last thing I'd like to ask. Penny. Oh, sorry. I don't think Penny had a chance to comment. No, on that I think question. that those are issues that would come before for the legislature. I've been there 11 years. I don't think we have put, voted on a mandated vaccine <coughs> in the fall. Um, but I do think it's something that could come our way. So it's, it's good that you bring it to our attention that we have to be very vigilant. <coughs> And I tend to believe in most cases, not in all, but in many cases, we have to leave decisions as much as possible to parents. I can't say that in all cases, there's, there's extremes, but generally, parents know best what's best for their family, not the <coughs> not And lastly, if I, can you explain to me the night we were justifying the gun issue when I was there so very late? Yes, you sure. were. You said to me that, um, could you explain to this room why you have to take on a bill that comes to be, what, what creates the... Why a bill has to be made has by the Yes. I can give you a quick overview of the process. I think Melanie wants me to explain why the bond bill had to or be raised. Or any bill. Or any bill. For you to no bill has to be raised. It is a decision made by the chairs of the committee. You've all heard tonight enough of our complaining that we're not the chairs, but that's a fact, we're not the chairs. So the chairs, who are always in the majority party, and right now it's Democrats, make every decision about what bill is raised. They can always choose not to raise the bill. They did not have to raise the gun bill. They don't even have to raise the governor's bill. No. But politics being what it is, if the governor wants a bill raised, 
it gets raised. It has a public hearing, and the committee can then choose to do nothing with it, or they can choose to vote on it. So with the gun bill 1160 that you were there until 1 or 2 in the morning to testify on, it was raised, it had a public hearing, but we never voted on it. Right. Or no, that was 1076. <coughs> um, so long and short is any bill can die at any time, and any bill can be raised if the majority party wants it to be raised. And any bill that's voted out of committee can be used as a vehicle for another bill that has died. So bills are often not used as substitutes. So a bill has to have a public hearing to be voted out of the committee. Once it goes out of the committee, it can be used for another purpose. And very often when we see a strike all uh, amendments which become the bills, which are completely different. Alice in Wonderland, that's all we can do. <laughs> you can't make it up. I'm not sure the majority of people in the state understand that. They don't. And I think She's saying most people don't understand how the process is so broken, and, and they don't, because if they did understand, this room would be overflowing if people understood the way the Connecticut legislature is doing its business, the people's business. Tommy? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, uh, some of those bills have titles, they call them dummy bills. <laughs> but there's a lot of us that are dummy bills that are meant, that aren't meant to be dummy bills. But, uh, you know, I. I guess the, the thing is, uh, you know, you've got right now one party control, like I mentioned before. I think that's never a good thing. To be honest with you, it probably wouldn't be a good thing if we had all the levers of power even over a long period of time. It does tend to have people get overconfident, you get <coughs> arrogant, and I think that's what you're looking at. You're looking at people that are overconfident and they're such arrogant. I mean, how else do you? to throw out the death penalty when 70% of the people want it. Mm -hmm. you got polls that say 70%. That's, that's arrogant. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of those that, that uh, this time around that had public opinion, illegal immigrants, with licenses. Overwhelmingly, people were yes. opposed. But it was passed by the General Assembly, signed by the governor. So it's like a daddy's knows best kind of government. And unless we make some changes, then that'll continue. It's very frustrating for us, because we sit there, you know, and we know the outcome of these votes. When we go to the floor, when we go to the floor no minds are changed on the floor. You're just, you're just saying that for, for record purposes and, and to for legislative intent, but you know, no matter how skilled a debater you are, you don't change anybody's mind. They, they sit in their caucus room until they hammer out a majority. Because they don't want to come to us for a vote. So they get it from their own group, and there's plenty of them. So they got more than enough. They got a cushion. They even had enough of a cushion so that they could allow floaters, people who might vote for a bill when they're not needed, or against the bill when they're not needed. But you don't know that. That's so why I said it was 1917 on one of the bills. We had two Democrats. Would they have been with us if, if they were the deciding vote? I don't know. That's why at least if we can't get control, at least we got to bring the numbers closer so that people have to give you an honest vote. Well, it's just about 9 o'clock. You guys have done great. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for coming to refreshments over here.